welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. Today is Monday, June the 15th, 2020. It's 4 p.m. New York time, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And uh, we're a little sad today, actually, because uh, my sister-in-law, Yona, had a death in the family, and so she can't join us today. Um, obviously, our thoughts and prayers go out to her and her family. Um, and also, I'm not sure where Louis is. Louis is AWOL today. I mean, I don't know where he went, but uh, we're going to try to get by without him. I don't know that this is going to be a full hour. Uh, doing a, a podcast by yourself for an hour can be pretty taxing, and I think I will probably not try to do that. But I figured, come on, just talk about a couple of things that have been going on that uh, might be of interest, and hopefully will help to give you that lift that you look for every time that you tune in. Um, first and foremost, a little update on the app. I would, like I was saying on Friday, I, I did not finish the app today, uh, or over the weekend, I should say. However, I did make some progress, um, quite a bit of progress. The app basically works. I mean, you can actually see what it looks like on the homepage of our website, LOAToday.net, and, you know, see for yourself how it's going to uh, operate. I'm just, I need to fix a couple of things on the back end. And then once I've got those fixed, then I can, um, uh, run some software that basically create the different packages for the iPhone, the Android, PC, and Mac. The version I have right now is, is the web version. So that version is basically the done version. Um, and then I'll be rolling it out and seeing what kind of uh, uh, feedback that I get from you, the listeners, because your feedback is going to mean a great deal to me. And let me know what I got right, what I got wrong, and hopefully it's going to make it a whole lot easier for you and for new listeners to tune in and check out LOA today. Um, so that's one piece of news. The other piece is we're obviously we're starting off on Monday and Mondays are beginnings. Beginnings of the week are often considered to be not so good days. People make, you know, they tell stories and write sad songs about Mondays and how difficult Mondays are. Uh, we like to think of Mondays as being a good thing, a good and happy thing, a positive thing, partly because, well, we're starting the podcast again for another week and partly because every day is a good day if we think that it is. In the midst of everything that has been happening in the world, people are finding it challenging, including conscious, deliberate creators like ourselves, to stay on track, to stay in a good place, um, because we know how important that is. We know how important it is to stay in a high vibration state, because that's where we so successfully attract what it is we want to attract most in life. And uh, so it becomes a very high priority to do that. But in challenging times, that can be difficult. Uh, I, I'll share a couple of sort of general thoughts that I have about that right now in terms of what's going on in the world. For all of the craziness that's going on, and this is kind of an ongoing theme we've talked about quite a bit, but for all the craziness going on, I see a lot of good coming out of it. Um, it may not come up immediately. I mean, obviously, like when you're in the middle of a pandemic, it's hard to see the good things that are going on, but I still see a lot of good coming out. And I think it, what I said at the beginning of the year, that this is 2020, a year of clarity, it's becoming more true than ever before in ways that I couldn't have even imagined when I first uttered those words. Uh, I think that by the time this year is done, people, regardless of whether they are conscious creators, whether they even know about the law of attraction, regardless of what their you know, religious views are or their political views or economic status or whatever, are going to be seeing life uh, and the essence of who we are in a much clearer light by the end of this year. And that to me is a big victory. Um, and that's just sort of a generic way of looking at it. Uh, much more specifically, we're going to see uh, different ideas and different views about the medical community because the medical community has played a big role this year. We're going to see a different uh, viewpoint, different ways of thinking about um, politics and government affairs. We're going to be, a lot more people are spending a lot less time uh, focused on news, although some people are focusing more on news, uh, particularly here in the U.S., but also in other countries around the world that are focused in on the racial tension situations. And even those, I see those potentially leading to some very good stuff. Um, it's just that sometimes you have to go through the tough stuff to get to the good stuff. So I wanted to share a couple of quotes. This is from Abraham Hicks's book, I'm going to hold it up to the camera for those who are watching the video. Most people obviously are listening to the podcast. Um, this is Ask and It Is Given. It's uh, really the first book that they put out uh, under the uh, byline of er Esther and Jerry Hicks, but it's really the teachings of Abraham, subtitled Learning to Manifest Your Desires. And this is a, a, a 
an idea, a concept I really wanted to discuss with Louis because Louis has a fabulous take on this, but I'll have to save that for another time. Instead, I'm just going to bring it up and tell you what I'm thinking about it. This is from chapter, what chapter number is this? This is chapter 16 in the book. If you have a copy of the book, it's page 82. And I'm just going to read um, a couple of uh, sections here. They're very short. They're about allowing um, because the art of allowing is... I think particularly in days like what we're experiencing now, more important than ever. And learning the ins and outs of allowing is really important. So let me just read for a moment from page 82. The first section is, is subtitled, Unwanted Must Be Allowed for Wanted to Be Received. Okay, so it says, Sometimes our physical friends express their desire for a less diverse universe. They long for a place where there are not so many unwanted things, a place where more things are exactly as they prefer them to be. And we always explain that you, do, you did not come forth into this physical experience wanting to take all of the experiences that exist and whittle them down to a handful of good ideas upon which all of you agree. For that would lead to endedness, which cannot be. This is an expanding universe and all things must be allowed. In other words, for you to understand and experience what you desire, you must understand that which you do not desire. For in order to be able to choose and focus, both must be present and understood. So hang on to that concept for a moment. Go to the second uh, section of the page. This section is entitled, You Did Not Come to Fix a Broken World. And it says, as non-physical source energy expressing through your physical experience, your physical experience is truly the leading edge of thought. And as you are fine-tuning your creative experience, you are taking thought beyond that which it has ever been before. As you enthusiastically made the decision to come into this physical body and create in this way, you understood from your non-physical vantage point that this physical world was not broken and in need of repair, and you did not come forth to fix it. You saw this physical world as a creative environment in which you and everyone else could express yourselves creatively. You did not come forth to try to get others to stop doing what they are doing and do something else. You came forth understanding the value in the contrast and the balance in the variety. And then he finishes uh, in italics saying, every physical being on your planet is your partner in co-creation. And if you would accept that and appreciate the diversity of beliefs and desires, all of you would have more expansive, satisfying, and fulfilling experiences. I think this is a particularly um, important message these days especially because there, especially in the world of politics, there's a lot of effort by people on various sides of issues, particularly the racial tensions issues, to try to get everyone else to think the way they think. And when you have multiple different ways of thinking about it, that's a bit of a challenge because you know, if everyone has to think the way I think and they're all thinking different ways, well, then this is often considered to be some kind of an affront, like it's an, an insult, like you're, you're not treating my issue seriously, you're not taking my issue seriously. It's understandable. I mean, particularly for somebody uh, who is a, what is often called a person of color, um, who has experienced some really rough experiences in their life simply because of the color of their skin. You know, so it's it's quite understandable that they would want to have um, that kind of more uniform thought. Similarly, somebody who is a lover of the environment, that's somebody who wants everybody thinking about climate change the same way. Or someone who is a believer in Second Amendment rights, going toward the more conservative side. They want everyone to think the same way about the Second Amendment. Um, for those of you who are not in the U.S., that amounts to the right to bear arms. Um, and there are a whole variety of them. But the the thing that has become the um, the watchword, so to speak, for politics these days, not just here in the U.S., but also in many, many countries around the world, is the division, the divide between people. And that divide occurs primarily because people insist, no, you must think my way. You must support my way. You must believe my way. And anyone who doesn't believe my way better take the highway because we're going to come to blows. We're going to come to odds with each other. 
And I think that's what Abraham was describing. They were describing, you don't really want to um, not have that in your life because you came into this world to experience contrast. On the other hand, it's fruitless to try to make everybody else think the way you do because you didn't come into this world for that reason either. So why did you come into the world? Well, they answer that. They say you came into the world to create, to be creative. And let's think for a moment just what that means. To create means in the context of being a law of attraction, conscious, deliberate creator. To, to create means to think about what it is that you desire, to get excited about it, and to have it come into your life as you take action to receive it and to accept it. That part we all get. That part makes sense. That part works for us. The part we have trouble with is that other people are doing the same thing, but they're doing it about different stuff. How dare they to actually want something different from what I want, particularly if I feel like that it is in conflict with what I want. And that's why we have this great big divide going on politically around the world. A whole lot of pe people are digging their heels in and saying, you got to think the way I think. So where does allowing fit into this? Allowing becomes a challenge, doesn't it? Because on the one hand, you have the challenge of allowing somebody who insists that you have to think the way they think, regardless of what political viewpoint they come from, because they all have their own issues, but they all want the same thing, don't they? They want you to think what they think. They want you to espouse what they espouse. They want you to support what they support. And if you don't, there's something wrong with you. By the same token, we have a tendency that I think a lot of people have to say, well, I don't want to have all this negativity in my life. I don't want to have all this contrast. I don't want to have all this pain and suffering and so forth. I'd rather blot that out. But that's also not allowing. And that is, in a nutshell, that is the essence of the paradox of what Abraham teaches. Because the paradox shows us we have to both be willing to allow the contrast that creates stuff that we don't like while at the same time allowing each other to attract what it is we want in our own lives without getting all wrapped up in the idea that you are not allowed to attract the thing that you want because it conflicts with what I want. That, in a nutshell, is why we have so much of a divide right now. Now, a couple of thoughts about that. First, we're never really divided. I know that's a strange thing to say in the context, right? Because I've just described all these different ways that we're divided, but we're really never divided. We're all connected, right? And I think everybody in theory understands that. We are spiritually connected. We are created from, and we are, we are creators of source energy. And that source energy is the energy that creates worlds. It's the energy that binds us all together. It's the energy that is all that it is. It is the source of all that is. That's why it's called source. And that source energy is powerful. And therefore, we are all powerful. So here's what we're kind of dealing with. We're dealing with the fact that we are all powerful and we don't have all the same desires and we don't all have the same needs. And simultaneously, that is a good thing. And we only are going to get what we're trying to attract if we can allow all that. Quite a challenge, isn't it? That's one of the reasons why we do this podcast. Uh, that's why normally I have co-hosts here to talk about this with. Um, it's why we focus on doing your daily dose of happy. Because we run into paradoxes like this and it, they just seem overwhelming. How can we possibly do all this? How can we be both allowing and at the same time um, not be afraid of contrast and at the same time put up with the fact that uh, Joe Schmo over there is attracting something that I think is harmful to me? And at the same time, be worried about the fact that sometimes I don't always successfully attract what I want to attract for, what, for a variety of reasons. And as a result, I feel like I have to force it to happen. I mean, all of these factors come into play. That's why we do the podcast, to help get through these, to help us to maintain that high vibration perspective. Because when we have the high vibration perspective, which we usually do on this show, it becomes easier to see how all that's going to work, doesn't it? 
it becomes easier to see how it is that you can have all of those conflicting, seemingly impossibly conflicting positions, beliefs, and thoughts, and experiences work together. And they actually work in harmony. That's pretty bizarre. And yet that's exactly what happens in life. So something to think about there. I wanted to also read another section on the same, another uh, piece of the book on the same topic of allowing. In the back of this book, again, this is asking that is given by Esther and Jerry Hicks, um, basically the teachings of Abraham. They have a glossary of terms. And I wanted to read the definition of allowing that they put into this glossary. It says allowing is the state of alignment with the well-being that flows from source. The focusing of your attention upon things that cause you to offer a vibration that allows your connection to your natural source of well-being. Now, tolerating is very different from allowing. Tolerating is seeing what is not wanted, feeling the vibrational evidence of that perspective, but deliberately taking no action. Allowing is deliberately giving your attention only to that which causes a vibration of alignment with source. When you are in the state of allowing, you always feel good. Well, that creates an extra wrinkle, doesn't it? Because we really didn't talk about it in those terms when we read the prior section. What those terms are saying, let me read that last sentence because it really says it very clearly. Allowing is deliberately giving your attention only to that which causes a vibration of alignment with source. When you are in the state of allowing, you always feel good. So only giving your attention to that which causes a vibration of alignment with source. What does that mean? Well, we are all aligned with source to one degree or another. The higher the degree of our alignment, the better we feel. The the better we feel, the higher our vibration is, and so on and so forth. So to be in alignment with source, basically to be in alignment with our true self, our inner being, as it's often called. That alignment is simply a, it's an ongoing feeling and state of agreement where what our our inner being feels about what we're doing, what we're thinking, what we're experiencing, what's coming into our lives is coherent with and consistent with what we are thinking and feeling and hearing and seeing and experiencing in our lives. In other words, or to turn around more accurately, source always sees us from our highest perspective, from our best perspective. And it's when we're in alignment, we're also seeing ourselves from our best perspective. And what do we mean by best? Well, what do I mean by best? I mean that from this perspective, we can truly be allowing. It isn't just tolerating. It isn't just putting up with. It's not putting up with something that we don't like. That's not really allowing. Allowing is saying, you know what? I don't have to like it in order to appreciate the value of it. I don't have to like it in order to appreciate the genius of a universe that allows people to be and think and feel what they want to believe and think and feel, even if somebody else disagrees with it. That is tremendous power. Having that ability to understand and to appreciate and to know that it's all good. Even the parts that I don't like, it's still all good. Knowing that is being in alignment. Knowing that is allowing. Knowing that and believing that, and that's probably the harder task, believing that, that's how the stuff gets through that we want to get through. That's how we attract the stuff that we want in life. Jeffrey uh, and is, is posting stuff in the uh, live stream. So Jeffrey, thanks for participating because you give me a little bit more to focus on before we wind up here. He says, what do you want to allow into your life and what is keeping us from allowing it? It's an interesting way of phrasing it, Jeff, because... Of the way you said it, you said, what is keeping us from allowing it? Ultimately, well, we can't, uh, we can't block what you are trying to attract, can we? I mean, we'll try to, we may feel like, well, you have to align with the way we're thinking or else you're wrong. We may try to shame you and we may try to blame you, but ultimately we can't block what you're attracting. Isn't that interesting? And I think that's kind of what you were trying to point out. What do you want to allow into your life and what is keeping us from allowing it? Well, actually, the two don't really go together much, do they? What you're trying to allow into your life is up to you. And what we're trying to do about it is irrelevant. 
How about that? I mean, we can make it relevant if we choose to, but at its core, at its root, what you are attracting, I have no control over. And what I am attracting, you have no, no control over. We do have influence. We can influence each other. There's been a lot of uh, studies done about that. We've talked about it endlessly here on the show. There are lots of different ways we can influence each other. Um, and the influence can be very good. It can be very helpful. Interesting thing, though, you, this kind of ties into the idea of, of a curse. You really can't influence somebody for the negative. The only way you can influence somebody for the negative or for, in, in an unhappy way, in a way that they don't like, is if they choose to accept it that way. So even then, they're in control. And when you influence them in a way that reinforces what they like, what they desire, what they prefer, well, if they're in a high enough vibration state and you're putting out there, yes, I want you to get what you like, what you prefer, if, if you put out there, yes, I want to support you in that, they get the support that they need out of that. It's a beautiful system. It's a really beautiful system. So thanks for bringing that up, Jeffrey, because that, that was a good point. It, it, makes it, it, it makes it so confusing at times to think, well, how do I satisfy somebody else with what I'm trying to attract? Until we re remember, it, it's not our job to satisfy somebody else. They're, they have just as much power as we have to attract what they want into their lives. That's part of allowing, is letting them and respecting the fact that they have the power. They always have the power, and we always have the power, too. Cool stuff. Um, like I said before, I'm not going to do a full hour. I've, I learned a long time ago, don't try to do a full hour yourself. It's exhausting. So I figured I would just talk for as long as I felt like talking. A half hour seems about right. I do want to remind people who are not yet subscribed to become a subscriber. Um, we are going to be announcing the release of the LOA Today app very soon. It's going to be cool because you're going to be able to use it as your new podcast app to listen to LOA Today. All of the episodes will come immediately to the device. Um, version 1 will have that along with a page that describes the co-hosts of the show. Um, also, there will be links to the book that we did a couple years ago on Amazon. You can look that up, Your Daily Dose of Happy, Real Success Stories of the Law of Attraction. Um, there's also going to be a link to the live stream videos. So those of you who are live streamers like Jeffrey, you'll have a nice easy way to get to the live stream page just by clicking the link. Um, there will also be links to the LOA Today website and the Grass is Greener, the podcast uh, play, the fictional play that Alex and I and my sister and others have been working on um, off and on for the last year. Uh, episode 3 is coming. It, episode 3 kind of got put on the back burner while I was finishing up this LOA Today app, but uh, it's coming. That's probably going to be the next project after this. Um, but by all means, be a subscriber because subscribers are going to be the first ones to find out how to get that app. And it's going to be really simple. All you'll have to do is go to either, if you're on an iPhone, you'll go to your apps app where you can you know, download all kinds of Apple apps and uh, you'll find LOA Today there and, and that's where you'll download it. On Android phones, you'll simply go to the Google Play Store like you normally do for downloading an app. And again, you search on LOA Today and it'll, it'll download there as well. Um, and then for um, PCs and Macs and so forth, um, you'll actually, well, all of these, you'll be able to go to the homepage of the website, LOAToday.net, like you normally would for subscribing, only now you'll also be able to download the app. In fact, going forward, that's what subscribing is going to be. It, you won't have to subscribe anymore. It'll just be part of having the app. So that's all coming, I think, this week. Um, just a couple things I'm trying to iron out to make all that possible so that I have, because it's a strange thing. You actually have to have different, versions of the app for different platforms. The coding that's needed for an iPhone is different from the coding for an Android, which is different from the coding for a Mac, which is different from the coding for a PC, which is different from the coding for a website, which makes it very, very time consuming to create. Fortunately, the platform I'm using for creating all this stuff writes all that for me once I get the, the main version created on the web. And that main version is a bear to learn how to write so that it will work finally when you do this write out. But the good news is the software will actually write that out for me. So it, it shouldn't be too long once I get the last few things fixed to get that app out. Um, and Jeffrey, yes, uh, cool. It was fun checking in as always. Yeah, I'm glad you did, Jeffrey. I appreciate the show and I appreciate the opportunity to participate and hopefully help. Yeah, well, you do help. It's a great thing. Oh, look who I'm seeing. Louis coming in. Let's see if I can get him. In. Well, maybe we're going to finish up a full hour here. Let's see if we can get him in here to talk to us. Louie, where are you? Here he comes. There he is. Hey there. 
Oh, he's trying to get his mic hooked in, I think. We've been doing a show for the last uh, 30 minutes or so, but uh, we can do another 30 minutes with you. That'll give us a full hour. How are you doing there? Oh, dear. I, I got a message from you saying that uh, there wasn't one. So. Oh, no, that was from Yuona because uh, um, she wasn't oh. going to be able to make it. Oh, oh, oh. That's what it was. Yeah. She had a, a death in the family. That's why she's not able to make it today. Oh, sorry to hear that. So um, we already. So, so you've been talking all, uh, all by yourself? Yeah, I was actually about ready to wrap up. I said I wasn't going to do a full hour by myself, but uh, then all of a sudden you popped up, which is uh, true law of attraction, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> And we were actually, I was uh, expounding on a topic uh, that you know very well. I'm glad you're here because I did not really want to hear your views on it. I was hoping to make it our topic today. I was talking about allowing, the art of allowing. And I read some mm. uh, stuff from the book, Asking It is Given as a way of, of um, kind of framing it. Um, in fact, they're, they're good passages. They're short. I'll read them again and get your take on it. And we'll see. We'll kind of just do, we'll let listeners do a little comparison to what I said to see where, where you came in on it. Um, the first comes from their glossary in that book. It, this is actually the second one that I read earlier, but it's the first one I'm reading to you. And it defines allowing as the state of alignment with the well-being that flows from source, the focus of your attention upon things that cause you to offer a vibration that allows your connection to your natural source of well-being. Tolerating, it says, is very different from allowing. Tolerating is seeing what is not wanted, feeling the vibrational evidence of that perspective, but deliberately taking no action. Allowing is deliberately giving your attention only to that which gives a vibration of alignment with source. And when you are in the state of allowing, you always feel good. So when you hear that, I mean, obviously, this is something you've known really well because you're well-versed in Abraham Hicks. But what do you think about when you hear that? Well, it, it, it threw me in the beginning because nobody had ever said to me that the only reason you you don't get what you want, Louis, is because you you're more focused on what you don't want on the subject than what you do want. And I was like, what? Is it that simple? <laughs> Can't be. You must be kidding me. And, uh, you know, when you, when you take a subject, Walt, and you start saying, all right, what are my thoughts for it? And then what are my thoughts for it not happening or it hasn't happened yet or whatever? Um, and then you start weighing them up and you start saying, well, actually, I am a little more focused on what I don't want than what I want and that's why I haven't manifested it yet or I've got a bit of a skewy um, kind of manifestation which is half half or something like that which could mean you know um, you, you know that explanation where, where they say you know if you want something it's like a train going that way and when you don't want something it's like a train pulling it back again or when you when you doubt it's not there yet or it hasn't come yet or um, you know, I don't have enough money or enough time or enough qualifications or experience, etc., to have it. So you, your train is going backwards and forwards. You know, it was such a simple explanation. It was just like so basic. And I was like blown away. It's like, is it that simple? My gosh. <laughs> and then I started realizing when I took individual subjects that that's exactly what's happening. A friend and I went to a park the other day and um, I just plonked myself in the middle of the park and he came along and he said, well, you know, I really want to be by ourselves. You know, there was nobody really around where I was, but it was in the middle of the field. So he went to a corner and a tree and we sat down there. Then there was this guy doing little laps between this tree, this exact tree where we were and, and another tree. And there were dogs there and there were people passing and all the rest of it. And he said, Oh my gosh, you know, I came here for, get away from everybody i said yeah well that's the problem <laughs> mm. he said you are more focused on getting away from people than to getting into a space on the field that had no resistance you know that there, there, you know that every everything there was a lot of space a lot of uh, and, and nobody bothering you so and and he looked at it and he thought about it and you know i got the impression that he was saying you know this is you know you're, you're right you know this is probably my manifestation of my thoughts and I was thinking about my own thoughts because it wasn't just his thoughts that were involved. It was mine as well. And mine was very much, which is something that I've done a lot of my um, more recent years in my life is I really don't care anymore. I don't care if there's lots of people. I don't care if there's no people, you know, it just doesn't bother me. I'll just go with the flow. I'll go with the flow. So, you know, I, I realized that my vibration wasn't really 
um, counting much to the output of what was happening. And it was more his output, you know, his focus of what, what was happening, which was causing um, the scenario. Because even though there were more people there, it really didn't bother me in the slightest. Um, you know, so we were doing some exercises together. But um, I, I have another experience um, that happened. So I, I don't know if you know much about the rental market, but I've got some rental properties and uh, um, my existing tenant was leaving and I needed to find a new one. And, you know, I, I said, okay, let me go do a bit of agent. Uh, you guys call them realtors in America, uh, right. letting agents in this country. So I went to one of those guys and see, can you start looking for people? And then I got another guy uh, from another agency. Can you look for people? And I was really thinking, oh, wouldn't it be nice if somebody could just rock up and I don't have to pay a realtor, you know, it would just be so cool. <laughs> um, so my tenant phones me up and says, and, and these are the kind of things that start happening when you're really working with low resistance, which is what we're talking about here. Um, she says, oh, somebody knocked on my door and said, oh, you know, is, is this coming up for rent? Because wow. I'm in number one and my landlord is kicking me out. And so she phones me up and I, I phone her up and I say, okay, let's go have a look at the property. Had a look at the property. She seems ideal and all the rest of it. But then she said she came from number one um, of the, the, this area. And I said, oh, I know who owns that. It's my friend. Uh -huh. So I phone up my friend and I say, hey, um, is, is, are you kicking out your, your current tenant? He says, yeah, yeah, it is because I'm, I'm trying to um, sort something out. Um, I won't go into those details. Those are, her, those are his details to tell you. Right. Um, so, you know, this is true. And I said, you know, what's she like? You know, is she paying and consistent look after property? Yeah, yeah, all fine. So I said, great, you know. Um, so let's get her on board. So I'm getting a tenant that is coming in, which is giving me two days to clean up the property, right. moving in again. Um, and I'm not paying any agents. That's <laughs> fabulous. That couldn't work out any better, really. It That's couldn't. Fabulous. And, you know, the fact that I knew the owner of where she was and that I could phone him up, right. my good friend, and just say, hey, what's she like? And, you know, it's just, you know, it's just amazing when you've got less and less resistance because, you know, you just get to that point where, you know, you start trusting the universe to bring miracles to you in any and every shape and form. And, and it's just great. Jeffrey and uh, Josie, Je Jeffrey's been with me um, during the first part, and Josie just showed up too. Uh, Jeffrey posted a question, and it's an interesting question. He says, have you heard of the concept of toxic positivity? What's your take on it in terms of LOA? So, Jeffrey, I am guessing, and it's really nice that you're always listening and, and type chatting <laughs> on here, and I wish there were, you know, there were more guys who, who wanted to interact like you. I really love it. Thanks. Um Positive toxicity. So what, what, what you're talking about is what Abram would say is impossible. Okay, so it's like I'm laugh crying. You can't. You're either one vibration or you're the other. You can't be positive and toxic or negative at the same time. It's impossible. Negativity can't live in a positive environment at the same time. So when we're talking about these kind of things, you really need to understand that you can't be both at the same time and the, the vibrationally impossible. I would add to that. This is one of the reasons why I prefer uh, to avoid use of the words positive and negative because positive and negative typically also have luggage baggage that go along with it. Well, they um, do because they're relative. What you think is positive, I might think is negative. Yeah, exactly. Like I like some movies that you don't. <laughs> That's right. yeah, exactly. I think they're very positive, and you think they're so negative. So is that movie positive or is it negative? Which is it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and on top of that, there can also be moral baggage attached to it. You you should think that this movie is wonderful. No, no, no. You should think that this movie is terrible. You know, again, it's the same issue, but with the moral thing attached to it, now it has extra energy. So now we're attracting more and more opportunities to experience this kind of dichotomy going on. So, Jeffrey, I think what you're probably talking about, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, you're probably talking about 
the thing that I hated as a kid, which I called inaccurately at the time, over positive or too much too positive. And you know, there was this girl who did this um, talk. I've talked about this before. She got on stage and she just won the um, debate on the subject, and the subject was positivity. And they brought her up at, at uh, assembly to redo the entire um, talk. And it was all very, 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 very positive. And I was like, no, I'm sorry. You just can't be that positive all the time. You just can't. And, um, you know, I realized that you weren't going, she wasn't talking about going up the vibrational scale. She was just talking about always being positive. You must be positive. I was like, that's not how life works. Cause she was negating the importance of negativity and showing its design and it's, in, um, you know, it's, it's expansion, um, ability, etc. So, you know, I kind of called that phony holy or, you know, too positive or whatever. I just hated it, you know. So if you're talking about toxic positivity, that could possibly be it. But, it, you know, it, it was mostly because the philosophy was flawed in the sense that it wasn't talking about the importance of negativity and its expansion, ability and place, etc. And that's definitely a higher end concept for somebody exploring law of attraction because... It's, it's a tough one, especially early on in your self-education to come to grips with the fact that, you know, you have to kind of accept and allow and not just tolerate. That's what that definition that I read earlier was saying. It, it isn't just ignoring it. It's, it's allowing it for what it is and saying, you know what, I accept the fact that it, mm. it's part of my life. It's there and it's okay. Um, it's also why I tend to avoid positive and negative. I prefer, prefer, I prefer like, I prefer dislike, I prefer um, don't prefer. I prefer to express things that way because it becomes much more clear to me that I'm just simply saying I like this or I don't like this. I'm not you, saying you know I, don't I, allow this. I don't allow that. It's just I like this or I don't like it. It's that simple. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, but the way I like looking at it now, which really was another biggie for me was, was – looking at it in terms of I am, I, first of all, I am aligned with it or not aligned with it. Mm -hmm. And therefore your positive and negativity gets you to take your own responsibility for whatever you think is positive or negative or aligned or not aligned. And once you understand the word alignment in its more refined meaning, which is far more refined than positive or negative, um, Defining it quickly means your clarity and focus or you're feeling good about what you're doing, which means that you are heading towards what you want. Um, so alignment is really all about being in alignment with what you want, and that feels good. So that's, that's the whole process. It's very simple, but uh, I feel it's a far more accurate way of uh, describing positive or negative. I'm aligned or not aligned with what? I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. uh, does that have an advantage to you over the idea of like and dislike? Yeah. Um, it's just a greater clarity again. Like and dislike again is a positive or negative emotion. That's an emotional guidance system. But it's not talking about heading towards what you want or heading away from what you want. It's just words which we throw out there, which don't necessarily have the clarity of that little aspect behind it. What, and what's the aspect that's missing from like... The aspect that's missing is heading towards everything that you want, that you have put in your vortex, or feeling negative about it, moving away from everything that you want. Yeah. And that takes on some importance uh, when we realize that very often we spend a lot of time focusing on what we don't like. Because then it becomes clear, well, since we're not spending all of our time focused on exclusively on what we like, there is something to the idea that we're trying to attract what we don't like. Mm. And when you come to peace with what you don't like, it transforms your life in ways you haven't dreamt. And talk about that for a second. What, what do you mean by it transforms your life? So... In the past, I saw things as negative, as wrong, as what I didn't want. All of those have been removed completely, utterly, and entirely. They don't exist for me anymore. 
they may exist very short term, but what it transforms into is, ah, this is an opportunity to expand. This is an opportunity to grow. This is why I'm here. This is why I came into the physical universe is to have these negative, inverted commas, these negative bad experiences. And then you never see those negative experiences very much anymore because you're step fiving, which is learning from what you don't want and turning it around to what you do want very quickly, almost at the same time. Yeah. that That's really the root of it right there. I think, um, because it's almost impossible to go through life without in some way seeing something that you don't like. I mean, I, I, I would perhaps even say it's impossible. I don't think it, you can actually go through life without seeing or experiencing or being presented with something that you don't like. You just have an aversion to it for whatever reason. So the question becomes, what are you going to do with it? Mm. And what you're describing is it certainly matches um, what I've been working on doing and getting better and better at it. And that is spending as little time as possible uh, on this thing that I don't like because I instantly know I don't like it. Mm. Um, doesn't mean that I, I want to completely avoid it. It just means, nope, I, I, I've just decided I don't really like that. And I'll spend time on it sometimes. I'll spend time on it, knowing there's a little bit of a, of a risk there. I, I almost mm -hmm. said danger, but it's not really a danger. It's a risk. There's a risk that the more time I spend on it, the more opportunity I'm going to get to have more like it. And I'm just going to have more opportunity to enjoy the fact that I but don't But there's like another it. way of looking at that, Walt. There's another way of looking at that. So once it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you can see it clearer. Mm -hmm. That's where I was so going. So you don't even have to worry it. about that access. Abs that aspect too much anymore either you just think well this is going to get so big I'm, I'm going to become so clear about what i want it's going to be great so let's go down the route and play with the negativity you know you don't even worry about it anymore you actually you know it's like bring it on you know that's why emotional conflict which was such a big in my childhood i used to run away from it like for a mile you know every corner every experience when somebody was going through emotional stuff or crying or um fighting or arguing vehemently i was i was i was gone i was around the corner hiding under a blanket or something now um there can't be anything more delicious as you know when i heard a friend of mine having this huge argument the other day i just sat back and watched it and it was just like beautiful it's like wow i really love this and, and i just you know i was sitting there really enjoying it and it's like this is cool this is really really cool and uh you know for them at that time probably wasn't cool at all but from my perspective now it is like no this is good this is clarifying and um you know a lot of things that are going on in the world now with all this conflict and race and all the rest of it this is brilliant it's really helping people get greater clarity of what they want um and you know i just see it as absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant funny i was echoing the same thought in the first part of the show while we were waiting for you to uh make your appearance uh that <laughs> all I, i've been calling this the year 2020 the year of clarity all along and that one of the things that was going to come out of all this stuff is we were going to see them with greater clarity you just echoed the mm. same thing all over again yeah um josie also had some stuff to share she says hi josie <laughs> she says i have a manifestation story to share for a long oh, time, great. I always liked the idea of the Oscars being held in April in my journal entries through quarantine to make award season fair to accommodate delays and releases. I scripted out Oscars to be held in late April 2021, and they are now being held April 25th. Talk about manifestation on a grand scale. <laughs> so she influenced the date of the Oscars. That's pretty cool. And then she follows up with a question. Do you believe that the more you surrender, the more you allow? What do you think about that? The more you surrender, the more you allow. Surrender to me is a similar word to letting go, which is relief and release. Um, so the process starts if you've got a subject and you've got a lot of resistance to it, you need to relief, you need to gain relief and release. And what was the word um, Josie used? Uh, surrender. Surrender. You need to right. surrender to it. Um, surrender is not a clean enough vibration to me. It seems, you know, giving in is an aspect of that one statement, mm -hmm. you know, you can look at it. So it's not a clean enough vibrational word that I would tend to use. Uh, 
tend to go to the words Abram uses. And I know Abram uses words that have got slightly cleaner vibrations. So I'm a little bit biased there. Um, I have a feeling we will probably be, as humanity, finding words with cleaner vibrations and we'll be bringing them in over time. Um, yeah. We'll be finding new ones. We'll be, we'll be making We're going to be inventing ones. them, I think. So, you know, I was going through this process. So you re relief and release uh, the stuff. And then you get to that tipping point. You're at that middle point where, okay, now I can allow more of that to happen. So I'm poor. I would like to be rich, but I need to get rid of my poverty consciousness first. So I need to go up the emotional scale. And then you get to that middle stage where I don't care anymore. And mm. you're sitting on that fence. Right. And then you go into hope which is that first positive emotion. I hope I get some money. I hope I get a little bit more finances. And then it's excitement. Oh my gosh, you know, it's starting to happen. It's starting to happen. You know, this tenant just moved in and, you know, I didn't do anything. And I don't have to pay the, the, the realtor a thousand pounds, you know, it's just like so good, you know, um, you know, I, I hope it all works out, you know, and, and, and I'm really expecting it now to work out. And then it's, you know, and the love and the joy and the fascination and the, and, and the appreciation that comes out of all this, you know, you don't understand how much that makes me appreciative of my low resistance on that subject and the movement towards what I want, which makes me feel good. I like what you just described. I, I would want to add to it the idea that I agree with you. Surrender has some stuff in the vibration that doesn't quite feel the same as allowing. It's It's got a little bit of a heavier feel yep. to it. I think it's probably because... You, you know how you can start feeling that after a while when you've played with these yeah. Abram Hicks for a little oh, while. Yeah. You can start looking at words and, and starting to feel the vibration of them rather than oh, just, yeah. you know, and, and, and it starts getting really clear. You're really, mm -hmm. really clear. And, and it just jumps out in you that you can't use the word God anymore. And even love is a sticky word. Um, you know, you want to start finding something else that means more what you're trying to say. You know? mm -hmm. It's a little more clearer. So you start struggling with some words and you start wanting to create new words for yourself. <laughs> in the case of surrender, I think that we have a definite association with war, with battle. And so when you talk about surrendering, you're almost bringing in by proxy a context of, fighting of of warring of of going to war and i i well, just rolling that, over and just being walked over you know yeah yeah just being a victim mm -hmm. and i i think more along the lines of uh bruce lee um i can't remember who brought this up it may have been linda linda armstrong uh brought up that bruce lee advocated move like water just oh, it's a, it's a famous youtube video yeah. If you pour water into a jug, it takes the form of a jug. <laughs> That's the way he says it. I can all, I can just, <laughs> yeah, I love Bruce Lee. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> and what he's basically saying is it's not about surrender at all. It's, it's truly more about allowing, just allowing yourself to just be, to be and be and to recognize that be and to approve of that be and to align with that be and to heck with that, what anybody else is trying to do. It's, you don't need somebody else to come in to make you surrender. You just allow. Mm -hmm. Very simple that way. Bring somebody else into the picture is what surrender does. I think it makes you, you have to surrender to somebody or something or some principle or some who knows mm -hmm. what, but allowing doesn't require you, anything. You like know, that. well, it boils down to things that are really, really simple. You know, we're talking about the big things like a realtor, et cetera. That's an, thousand pounds or whatever but you know i was playing frisbee with my daughter on on a lawn um so i was saying to her spend a little bit of time focusing on what you want to do and how you want to do it mm -hmm. before you do it yeah just spend 10 seconds you know mm -hmm. 14 seconds. <laughs> 14 seconds. See, where did that come from? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> 14, and... you think that was a magical number or something? <laughs> well, humans are going to make a 10 soon. <laughs> We're going to get there. <laughs> um, so, you know, you really start getting how a little bit of pre paving on a mental thought level really makes a significant difference to the next step in your life, the next step in your life, the next step in your life. If anybody's ever done that Abram Hicks exercise where you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do 
you start thinking about how happy you are and how you're enjoying life and you're going to go to the bathroom and brush your teeth and how much you're going to enjoy that and you know that whole trip and then you go from the bathroom to the kitchen and how much you're going to enjoy breakfast and making it and all the rest of it and how you're going to enjoy getting into the car and getting ready to go to work and then how you're going to enjoy getting through the traffic and et cetera et cetera when you when you spend that pre-paving time it just significantly changes your life but that's something I do every morning, actually. That, that's part of my morning routine is to wake up. Because mm. honestly, I mean, I, I have not totally cleaned my vibration now because nine times out of ten when I wake up in the morning, I start off with a frown on my face because I have this instant uh, dread of something that's going to happen, even if I don't know what it is. And I have you to remind myself. You still have those. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I still do. And I'm sure a lot and, of people do well. So, you know, it's, sure. Yeah. And, and um, so yeah. I, I immediately recognize, well, nope, that's not the way I want to start the day. <laughs> and so that's why I make it a point every single day as I'm opening my eyes, as I'm becoming aware, I don't want to start the day that way. I want to start on a higher vibration. What's it going to take to get to that higher vibration? Um, I don't, I don't necessarily do it the way you were just describing. I just, I describe it more in terms of, um, what is it that I'm going to enjoy that I'm going to be doing early on in the day? And one of my things, of, obviously, is my nature walk. I like to do my nature walk. So I imagine myself, I put myself immediately into that nature walk to start feeling better, to start feeling good. And it doesn't take long. No, I mean, it I, doesn't. Good it news doesn't. is I'm, I'm doing this, even though I haven't, haven't awakened the way I want to yet, I've been doing it long enough now that I can snap into that higher place in about three seconds. It's really quick mm. now. You know, so. And, and this, this is what happens when you build up a vibration of consistency of what you want, you get this thing that the money industry has called compound interest. <laughs> I love it. You get compound interest on your thoughts because <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the law of attraction takes them, amplifies them, and, and, and the curve goes up very steeply. Very much so. Yeah, that's true. And uh, hey, I wanted to read you the other part that I read and see what you, I mean, I think we kind of touched on it a little bit, but this is a, another part of the same book, Ask and It Is Given page 82, actually. Um, I'm going to skip the first part because we kind of talked about that. I want to go right to the second part and just uh, get your take on that, and we'll, we'll wind up the show after that. It's, it's subtitled, You Did Not Come to Fix a Broken World. And it says, a non, as non-physical source energy expressing through your physical experience, your physical experience is truly the leading edge of thought. And as you are fine-tuning your creative experience, you are taking thought beyond that which it has ever been before. As you enthusiastically make the decision to come into this physical body, as you made the decision and as you create in this way, you understood from your non-physical vantage point that this physical world was not broken and nor was it in need of repair and you did not come forth to fix it. You saw this physical world as, as a creative environment in which you and everyone else could express yourselves creatively. You did not come forth to try to get others to stop what they are doing and do something else. You came forth understanding the value in the contrast and the balance in the variety. And then in italics, every physical being on your planet is your partner in co-creation. And if you would accept that and appreciate the diversity of beliefs and desires, all of you would have a more expansive, satisfying, and fulfilling experience. You know, well, what has happened to me over the years is that precise aspect is appreciating everybody for their different belief structures. Mm. And I can't think how it can be any other way now. Yeah. I really wouldn't want you all to believe what I believe unless you wanted to. <laughs> I would not coerce, um, Bible bash. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Now that would take a real stretch of my imagination. Louis de Sousa, the Bible basher. Bible bashing. <laughs> um, so, you know, any, anything like that, you know, and, and specifically because my great passion is law of attraction and motions sure. of guns, et cetera. I don't want to bash that on anybody, but I will state it and move on. Take it, leave it. Um, and, you know, I really love that aspect. I really love it because it has freed me up from, trying to waste my energy on trying to get somebody else to believe what I believe. And the only reason I would do that world is because I didn't really believe in myself. Mm -hmm. I need you to validate that my belief, yeah. because then you, if you believe my belief, then my beliefs more validate. And right. that is just so BS. It's just out <laughs> of the context of absolutely anything. I don't want that. Um, 
So, you know, I enjoy, I just enjoy throwing crumbs out and, you know, people can eat them or spit them out. Okay. <laughs> but um, I get a lot of fun out of sharing this. Mm-hmm. That's it. I just get a lot of fun sharing. It's also, though, a challenge we run into every day because while we may be achieving this level of understanding and appreciation that, you know, I love the diversity. I love the different viewpoints, even the ones that I dislike. I still love them. Others don't necessarily share the same view. And many of them are going to try to coerce us into stuff. They're going to try to shame us into stuff and blame us into stuff and make us feel like we have to believe what they think and so forth. And we're dealing with Do you know what I say to those guys, Will? What do you say to those guys, Louie? Good luck. Bring it on. Bring it on. (laughs) Try your best. (laughs) Try your best. (laughs) But that's what you get when you're confident. When you understand what you believe, you can do that. Mm. When you're not that sure about what you believe, you're going to get knocked around. Oh, yeah. And that's why I'm always encouraging people, you know, understand what you believe. You know, if you go to anybody, world, you, just tomorrow, go to somebody who you, you work with, you know, and walk up to them and say, what do you believe? Why do you believe that? And most people will not have a clear, if not even vague understanding of that. You know, even if they follow a specific religion like Christianity or Buddhism, and they will say, well, Christ is my this. And I'll say, well, why do you believe that? 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 And dig that back. Oh, because my parents brought me up to believe in here. That's about right. (laughs) You know, um, or if they've had a personal experience, now I'm excited. Now we can have a good conversation. Now we can talk. (laughs) That's true. Because once you have that personal touch, that conversation, even if it's an uncomfortable one, will become more comfortable. Hmm. Even if it's a topic that you would not normally have wanted to be a part of, well, now you can handle it because now it's based on what I'll call truth, a personal truth. It's it, it's it's the truth within as opposed hmm. to this is something true that has been scientifically proven. It's the truth within, the truth that, that feels true to you and to me and my truth that feels true to me and, and everyone's but truth. I, I can't understand people who worship the altar of science. And the reason why I can't understand that is because science has been proven to be wrong so many times and needed to correct themselves. <laughs> so why would you put yourself at an altar or something that's always changing? I don't know. It's just, just me. <laughs> I just can't get it. Just proving that even Louis has some things he's still learning to feel more allowing about. That's all. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a good stopping point. That, that, that's that, great. That, that's great. You can, you can, you can believe the altar of science as much as you want. Um, but I'm sorry, I can't, I can't bow, bow to that altar that, you know, the earth was flat and now it's round, you know, it's just, that was a scientific fact at one stage. It was a scientific fact at another stage, but it's, you know. Yeah. Science is, is always kind of behind the eight ball to borrow an old expression in mm-hmm. that no matter what it does, it's always behind the times. Always behind. Always. It can't do anything but be behind the times because it's always measuring. What and you happens. know why? Because it needs to convince everybody else that what they now believe is correct. And the time and energy that is wasted trying to lift the whole rest of the world up to believe what you believe is what makes them fall down. Well, so I, I won't go that far because I think there are scientists who I would call pure scientists. They're the ones who really aren't trying to convince anybody else of everything. They're simply trying to understand, but they are still stuck in that same pattern of looking at what was. They aren't actually looking at what is. They're looking at what was all the time because all their data is based on what was. And they're constantly looking for convergences in data and then drawing their conclusions therefrom. So that to me is is the weakness of science. I still think it's interesting to know what science is doing because so many people are interested in it. Doesn't mean I necessarily buy into it, but you know, because they're so interested in, I'm interested in it. I'm curious to see what they're. Well, there's lots of aspects of science I do buy into. Mm -hmm. Loads. Um, Those are the ones that work for me. Those are the ones that I can see that are right for me. And Mm -hmm. sure, that's fine. Yeah. But there's many I don't. So it's just. Mm -hmm. Once again, you're picking and choosing. You're deciding. I feel good about this. I don't feel. And I'm allowed to. I remember somebody was saying when I was really younger and I had this like philosophical outlook on life. And they'll say, well, there's two sets of philosophies. This, these guys believe in that. These guys believe in that. And I said, you know, I like that part of that one. And I like that part of that one. And he said, oh, yeah, well, 
you're not, you're not supposed to mix the two. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, aren't I? But I really do like that part of that and that part of that, and they make sense to me. But I don't like that, and I don't like that. <laughs> there was a time when I would get frustrated with people who would draw generalistic uh, descriptions. Uh, you know, there are two kinds of people in the world, that kind of thing. And then I heard something that was a, kind of a wise-ass response to that. And once I heard that, I, I lost all of my negative antipathy toward the mm-hmm. whole thing because the, the, the thing says there are two kinds of people in the world, those who say that there are two kinds of people in the world people and those who don't. You know, don't. <laughs> it, just, <laughs> it makes enough fun of it that I was able to let go at that point. So, okay, all right, I give up. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about that anymore. It, it, it's this You know, whenever I hear that now, even when my wife or <laughs> myself um, or anybody starts saying, you know, you need to choose this or this. I said, no, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. What about this and this and this and this and this and this and this? Uh, but then I can't corral you down to the path that I want you to if I don't give you just two choices. So it's it's the oldest technique in the book to corral somebody down. In, oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's and uh, the reason why it, it probably irked you was because, you know, it was corralling. Sure. It well, it's kind of force. What do they call it? The um, route that is not necessarily accurate for them. There's a, there's a term from um, ancient Greek, and I can't think what it's called, the, the something method. Socratic method, the Socratic method. That's what they're basically doing. They're trying to narrow, 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 narrow. Um, the problem, of course, is that just in terms of people who are alive, there are 8 billion different viewpoints with 8 billion different uh, ways of looking at things. And those are just the ones who are currently living in human form, not counting all the other life forms and all those who used to be here. And I mean, the, the, the number of perspectives is enormous. You know, very, yeah, I mean, the perspective true. that you are your own ancestors and you have yeah, right. all that information. <laughs> Good luck with narrowing that down. <laughs> um, but then, you know, once you kind of get to all, or, or through all that, you start realizing how important and clear and nice and fantastic and enjoyable it is this lifetime. Mm. This contrasting experience toy that I'm playing with this is so great. I've got this vibration interpreting machine and I can <laughs> do what the hell I want. <laughs> I love it. You know, I realized that when I was young. I realized that nobody could take away my body. Mm. And I could experiment with it to any degree I wanted. And I can tell you, I've done some experimentations on my body. You, you told us some of them. I got a good taste of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and it was nice because nobody could take that away from me. Hmm. And that was something I had full autonomy of, is spending hours breathing in weird, different, wonderful ways and seeing what the effect was or, you know, doing headstands for incredibly long periods of time or studying my poo or <laughs> <laughs> and admitting it on a podcast <laughs> uh yeah and uh, my urine and you know all, all those kind of things it was it was just you know just to get involved with all that is just amazing and you know you start to come to conclusions which you didn't need anybody to tell you you know mm-hmm. Yeah, stinky sinky or a fluffy floaty. Which one? What did you eat to get the stinky sinky? What did you eat to get the fluffy floaty? You know. <laughs> All I know is that I started off the show thinking I was going to do it myself, and figured I'd do maybe a half hour worth. We're now at the hour and five minute mark. Well, so much for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> time, time to tell people about the. <laughs> but thank you very much for uh, logging in, even though you weren't quite sure what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> that shows how challenging communication can be, but it all worked out really, really well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jeffrey and Josie in the live stream, and especially thank you to our podcast listeners as well. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, everyone.